Thank you again, and let's begin with our uh, question and answer session. We have the first caller from East West Consultants, Gaithersburg, Maryland, United States of America. The, the, the question is the, the problem of exponentiality is very acute in institutions of higher education given the explosion in recent years of new knowledge and fields and professions and the need for administrators, faculty, and students to acquire it through updated and enriched programs of study and instructional learning protocols. This is particularly urgent in fast emerging nations like India, Mexico, Brazil, and China. What is your viewpoint on this? The mission for 28 years, now the ITC network, has been knowledge sharing. So I would suggest that more institutions of higher education around the world become members of ITC GKNET and participate in globally transmitted programs like this. I do believe that the context of emerging nations, India has a tremendous advantage due to the English language proficiency of its population. This is an area of competence that must become a training and certification priority in countries like Mexico, Brazil, and China. Their institutions of higher learning should also seek partnerships with leading non-campus-based distant education universities such as Ashford University and San Diego Global Knowledge University to make available their vast and innovative diploma and degree programs without having to invest in developing them. Our moderator, Dr. Saba, is a pioneer of distance education and I suggest you contact him to get his guidance on the important topic. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, we have a second caller from Universidad Autónoma de Mexico in Cuatitlan, Mexico. The question is uh, your reference to the fact that the members of generations Y and Z who represent about 50% of the world's population, consider email is a thing of the past is truly amazing. Do you think that we all need to become techies now? No. The great news is that human networking technology is more and more user-friendly, as we can see in the many of the popular web social networks today. The challenge is more for us to decide to make the effort to develop the skills or global competencies, as Dr. Miguel A. Cardenas calls them, to use productivity, all the modularities and media and technologies available to make us all more competitive and innovative in what we do. Thank you. We have another caller from ERS Corporation Limited in Tianjin, China. The question is the incredible growth statistics you have presented of social and collaborative networks globally confirms that there is social and productive value in networks and alliances. Metcalfe's law tells us that their usefulness will continue to dabble. What will be the limits to this phenomenon? Is this what you call socionomics? Correct. I believe that the phenomena of the networked organization and communities this century and our inherent social nature as human beings will make this a long-term trend limited only by the power and reach of communications and information technologies at our disposal. All right. Thank you again for your uh, response. Uh, we now have a caller from Manak Engineering Services in New Delhi, India. Welcome to our program. The question is the realization that all of our customers in any sector or industry we might be in have become netizens or citizens of a globally connected universe should be convincing enough for all of us to feel the need to change and become part of this globally integrated social media dominated world. What if our organizations do not have the financial resources to do this? As I expressed in my presentation, I believe the processes involved in becoming integrated into synergistic 
networks of mutually beneficial relationships have never been easier thanks to technology and the leadership of long-term organizations like the ITC Global Knowledge Network. I believe the challenge is more in changing the mindset of decision makers than in the lack of financial resources to do it. Culture and traditions are also factors to consider in certain nations and regions of the world. Thanks again. Our next caller is from Universidad Autónoma de Chihuahua, from Chihuahua, Mexico. The question is, the ETK model and synchronization are powerful system-oriented approaches that will become increasingly crucial in networks of organizations for business with common purposes. How can we incorporate this model and methodology to our organizations most effectively? I believe that education and training should start with the top leaders and decision makers. They should then promote and mandate their utilization at all levels of the organization. We should avoid developing expert groups only. Everyone should strive for organizational synchronization in all functional areas and at all levels. Very good. Thank you for your excellent questions and responses. 